Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel and today I want to talk to you about a Briggs engine. Now I really like these engines. They are the Intec Twin Series. And the reason they call it a V-Twin is because the two cylinders where they connect to the connecting rod kind of make a V. This is what the blower housing looks like. I have it off the engine. If you have a blower housing that looks like this, whether it be 19 horse up to 24 horse, they're all pretty much the same. This is on a Craftsman, but it could be on anything really. And this is what they call the Intec V-Twin. What the symptoms of this mower that was the problem was the customer complained of having low power and it was popping or backfiring. Now, whenever you have low power on these engines, you can pretty much assume that there's an issue either with the carburetor, which is usually not the case, or the engine's only running on one cylinder. It's amazing how much power this engine still develops when running on one cylinder. I've gone to customers' homes that have complained that their mower seems to be running okay, all except it doesn't have much power, and I get there and it's a twin cylinder, and here they've been mowing on one cylinder for the last couple weeks. Usually on these, it's the same thing. These overheat for whatever reason, whether there be too much debris up in here, especially if you live in the north and over the winter mice have made nest up here or if you mow in an area that creates a lot of dust and debris what happens is these fins get blocked up with dust and dirt and this is the blower and that blower housing directs the air down over these fins to keep this engine cool if you run your engine low on oil or you don't change your oil often or if you have all that dust and debris or mice nest up on top, you can pretty much figure that you're going to have a problem either with a busted connecting rod, which is a serious problem, or something like this where you have a valve guide that comes out of the head. And that's what's happened in this case. I'm going to pull off the valve spring so you can see what it looks like underneath there, so you can see what I'm talking about. And we'll compare it to a head that is the correct way where the guides are positioned correctly when you start to troubleshoot it it's real easy pull off those valve covers there's only two there's four bolts that hold each of them on I think they're three ace bolts once you pull those valve covers off you're gonna look at the push rods what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the rocker arms and you're gonna see if they move and if one moves excessively I want you to look for the push rods that are normally here now I've got these out if you don't know there's two different types of push rods that go into each head. The aluminum push rod goes on the top, which is the intake valve. And on any Intec engine, even the single cylinders, the aluminum push rod always runs the intake side. The bottom is a steel one. This is all steel. And of course, obviously, this goes down here. What you'll do is just look down these long ways whenever they're still in the engine and look to see if they're bent. Let's say you've had this mower since it was brand new and for whatever reason this problem surfaced on you and you pull off the valve cover and you're seeing that the top push rod is bent. That's what the case was here. But the bottom push rod is missing. Now you're thinking, who got in here? Who took my push rod? <laughs> what happened? There's nobody stealing your push rods. It's not a, a thievery thing. It's not a magic push rod. What happens is occasionally, whenever those push rods fail, they get pushed into or they go into the engine through the return oil galley that is in the head. And that's a bad thing because once that push rod goes into the engine, it goes down into the engine sump where there's a lot of moving parts like your governor, your crankshaft, your timing for your camshaft. There's a lot of things that that push rod could hang up on and it is steel so it could cause some problems to where it might break something. Before you tear your engine apart do yourself a favor and drain all the oil out of the engine and just check. There's a slight possibility that that push rod didn't get bent very much and you may be able to retrieve it. Yep that's right it's a one in a hundred shot but it could happen, and that's what happened in this case. Now on this side of the engine, what you'd have to do is remove the flywheel, the flywheel nut, however method you may use. There's different ways of doing it. I like to use a hammer method, which a lot of people frown upon, but I've been doing it for years, and I've never messed up a mower yet. Uh, on the push mowers, it's a little bit different because those shafts are a little bit smaller, but on these bigger ones, it's not so much an issue. You just have to know how to do it. Once this is off, you can remove your dipstick. Now, I did not even have to remove my dipstick. That's how lucky I was. 
But when I went to drain my oil, I used an extractor, which I've done a review on that extractor on this channel. I might include a link here. You can check out which oil extractor I've used in the past. You put your extractor down in here and pump it a few times and it'll suck all the oil out of the pan. When I did slip that plastic tube down inside this plastic tube, I noticed at the bottom I heard a metal sound like it was hitting something and that should not be the case. What I did is I picked up my little magnetic pickup tool and I stuck it down in the dipstick and as I got near the bottom I heard it click and I went to pull it up and something tugged on it and then it came loose. So I went ahead and tried it one more time and just so happened I caught the ball end of the push rod and it pulled out the dipstick tube. Now why is that such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because I don't have to pull the engine now. All I have to do is replace the oil that I drained. That's a lot of labor that was saved. And on top of that, there's a chance that you might damage the gasket for the sump. And those are anywhere from $10 to $25, depending on where you get it at. Going back to this area, the reason that the push rods are bent is because when those guides come out, the rocker arm cannot compress as far as it should. So something has to give and the weak link is the push rod. These are kind of a sacrifice piece so something more critical doesn't happen internally or externally to cause parts to break. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove that valve spring like I mentioned and show you what a pushed out guide looks like. Here I got the valve springs off. I had to push this valve guide in because it's so far out that it didn't allow the uh, keepers to come loose from the retainers. You can see how far out this is. Now you got to be careful at this point because there's nothing holding these valves from going into the cylinder. So what you want to do is make sure that your uh, valve has something to hit. And what I do is I put the cylinder at bottom dead center, meaning that if you put a screwdriver in the cylinder without the spark plug in it, that it will go as deep as it possibly can go when you rotate the engine slowly by hand. And once it's that deep, what you can do is take a pull rope from a push mower and uh, you can feed that in this hole, um, you know, a real long one, and then leave a little bit hanging out. Once you get as much rope in there as you can, except the little bit that you leave hanging out, then you slowly rotate the engine into the top dead center position or as close as you can get and what that does is it holds the valves from falling inside and then whenever you're done you just rotate the engine back a little bit and then take and grab the end of the rope and pull the end of the rope out and you're finished uh, everything's okay but whenever this guide is like this what you need to do is get a socket that is the same size as this guide the same diameter you slide it over the valve and you tap this valve guide back in. You do what they call peening. And peening is basically a screwdriver or a punch, which I like to use a punch. And you punch marks all the way around the valve guide. And what that does is allow this aluminum to spread and tighten on the guide. Once you peen all the way around, it spreads the aluminum and makes it to where the guide cannot come back out again. I'm going to show you what that looks like on another head that I've already done. Before I show that to you though, I want you to know that I don't trust this repair 100%. So I only do it on mowers that aren't being depended on heavily or I don't mind telling the customer if this head fails again in the future. I will repair it, but you're going to have to pay the difference and buy a new head. In this case, this gentleman lives about 20 to 25 miles away, and he depends on this mower considerably to mow his lawn. So I don't want him to be down without it. Plus, I don't want him to have to spend any more money than he has to on down the road. So what I did is, in this case, I purchased a new head. I'm going to put a link down below for it. You can get it really inexpensive and there's a lot of things that come with it. I'll show you that in a bit. But in the meantime, I'll show you the head that I've already repaired in the past and has been sitting on my shelf for future repairs. So let's look at that. All right, so in this repair, which this head has been done for quite some time, and this is for the other side of the engine, you can see where I placed the valve guide back down close to where it was originally and then I peened the area like I mentioned. Each one of these little dots isn't factory. This is from where I 
took a punch, put it relatively close, and then did a strike to move that aluminum up against the guide so it doesn't come out again. And you can see down inside there, I peened that area also. So I have it grabbing on both sides. So if that guide comes back out again, then I know at that point I need to get a new head because I've already done this repair and this is the best that I can do. So I'm going to show you the surefire way to make sure this doesn't happen again. And that is to buy a new head. Let me show you what the new heads look like. Of course I got it from Amazon. I'm going to include the link down below. Let me go ahead and open this up. And this is a part number 796232. It's a Briggs & Stratton piece. It's all original. So obviously you have a little box here. It's going to have all the little hardware in it. And of course this is going to be your gaskets that you need. Then here's the head itself. And what a beauty it is. You can see the... Uh, valve guides in there actually sitting at the position that they should. This is what comes in the envelope. Obviously a head gasket. This is a valve cover gasket. And uh, then there's a couple of different gaskets here. This is for the intake. This is for the exhaust. And this might be for uh, an intake also of a different design. And it basically says use the intake gaskets that match the ones removed from the engine. I'm pretty sure this is going to be mine here. But some intakes look like this. Also, it says if your engine wasn't originally equipped with gaskets, you need to put silicone uh, on there just like it was from the factory. This box here, that's what comes in it. You get your rocker arms, your uh, fulcrum style pedestals, and then of course the bolts, and they have a little bit of Loctite on them to secure them once you get them set. So this is what you get. Now I'm not going to go through every step of installing the head and everything. This is just more for what you need to look for whenever you have symptoms like I discussed. And then I also wanted to show you the options of what you could do for the repair. Uh, again, the link's going to be down below for a brand new head. They're only, at this time of filming, about $86. You can pay an extra five, ten dollars and get it overnighted like I did and that way you can be on the road and back mowing right away. I shouldn't say on the road, on the lawn. And uh, you get all the gaskets, which is kind of nice because you're most likely going to need a head gasket. I seriously doubt you're going to be able to salvage that. So, that's my video for today. If you like this video, click like or subscribe. And again, the links are down below for the uh, items I talked about. I appreciate you watching. Bye.